on the way out, you were like, hey, I'm a coroner. And I was like, what was that now? I've done roughly a little bit over 8,000 cases. 8,000 bodies. How's that for a body count? So in pathology, the first reaction of everyone is, let's cut into it. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah let's now. go. I can actually take your tongue and completely hollow out your body in like one. Why do I do this podcast? I am also an ex-porn star. Did you f*** out a hot European person? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get any STDs. No condoms? Yeah, rough. Yeah, no. I see a lot of hot dudes in the morgue, and I'm just like, man, what if he was the one? I want to get into this as fast as possible, because you, you brought props. Yeah, so these are just snippies that are pretty versatile. Um, they can easily be used I, I like to use these for cutting baby ribs. Shout out to Home Depot uh, for, <laughs> for... What's the last weird thing somebody had stuck inside them? Very special guest. Unlike any other guest I've had, we have Raven Frazier here, and we I'm getting very excited. We met yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was very, I did a podcast yesterday at a different studio, and then I, on the way out, you were like, hey, I'm a coroner, and I was like, what was that now? Um, <laughs> I'm like, I must have you on the podcast. <gasps> Super happy to be here. Yeah, and this is cool. going to be, uh, have you done, do you talk about this a lot openly, like your job and stuff? I mean, not so much. People don't really ask me about it, and I don't really talk about it unless it's directly asked, just because historically when i first started working as a coroner and i would talk about it you don't really know what somebody else's circumstances are okay and the things that i talk about could be offensive or triggering to someone else so i mm -hmm. usually just keep quiet about it until somebody just asks and gets excited yeah okay, gets okay, really okay. excited yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and then yeah, i'm like yeah, yeah I'll let's was, fucking go that was me i was like i'm sorry my podcast you must come on here um so you also run a podcast studio yeah yeah, Deaf Noodles, out of Deaf Noodles Comedy Club. It's okay. a new comedy club in Hollywood. Oh, is a club there too? Yeah, yeah, we have a comedy club in the front. It's just, oh. it's a small, like, kind of hole in the wall. Uh, we do mics throughout the week and okay. then small shows on the weekends. Okay. Do you also do comedy? No, oh. I, so I used to. So okay. um, I am also an ex porn star. Okay. And what haven't you done? <laughs> <laughs> anal. This is a lot of stuff. <laughs> Wait, you know anal? I did anal once, okay. yeah, I like, but... Concert, I thought that was part of the... No, no, I did it once. You can say no, butts off, butts off. Yeah, hands off my butt. So were you a coroner before? Porn? No, no. Porn, then coroner. Yeah, so I was actually originally a nurse, and I worked in palliative care okay. hospice. Okay. And that was really difficult. I, You know, you create these tangible relationships with people that mm -hmm. are inevitably going to die very soon. Mm -hmm. And then um, my grandma got sick, and I became her primary caregiver. And after that, I was like, I can't go back to nursing. It's too much. Yeah. So I just did the next best thing, which was getting into porn. Yeah, that seems like such a, that's, yeah. a, that's a big jump. Yeah. Bye, Grandma. Here's my gaping ass. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a very, that's a quick, that's a quick jump. Were you always into porn before that? Or how is that like, how do you get to that next? Kind of. So during my undergrad, um, I... So I lived in Northern California where the armory is for kink.com oh. and they used to offer a service where you could cam, but unlike camming at home where you're just like begging for tokens and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, not begging. Well, you're charging. Yeah, 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 charging, charging. Yeah. Asking politely. Yes, for yes. Some, Demanding some, politely. Demanding politely for some tokens, yes. Uh, you could go in and just do a three-hour shift. They pay you $50 an hour um, unless you make more tips, and then they pay you out that. Okay. So I was working at Kink doing these cam sessions and kind of came up with the name Alexa Ames. So that was so I was doing that during my undergrad Okay. because um, I didn't have a lot of other free time to be able to work. So when I stopped nursing, I was like, well, I'm just going to go back to my roots, you know? <laughs> and, and you like doing it. It was like fun and... Yeah, yeah, I mean, at the time, like, it just depends on where you are mentally. Like, mm -hmm. You know, I was in my really early 20s and I was like, oh, hell yeah. You mean I'm just going to, I just get to do drugs and drink and get paid all this money yeah, and yeah, yeah. wake up whenever I want. Yeah. And <laughs> That sounds like a great job. Yeah. Yeah, well, the shininess wears off really mm -hmm quickly mm -hmm. but um so when i started deciding to segue out of porn i had been using that platform to do comedy and i made some connections um so 
I started doing comedy and then I started doing the Sirius XM circuit. Okay. A lot. And then I eventually had my own show on okay. Vivid XM. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I guess like eventually I was like, man, I'm out of porn and I'm doing these other things, but it's all still tied to that name, Alexa Ames. Mm -hmm. Raven, like who, who the fuck am I? So what did the Ames mean? Like an aiming? Like you were... No, no, actually, okay. so Ames came after, uh, remember AOL Instant Messenger? Yes. Yeah, so I was like a big, like, Okay, I felt like yeah. you had a big squirt that you were aiming like at a fucking no, no, target growing, or something. No, I was like, really it was- good with your I, aiming. I was thinking of my name and I was like looking at a computer at the time and I was like, man, I miss AIM. Okay, no, that's, I thought it was something very specific. Okay, okay. No, no, no. Because you just mentioned that you're best friends with Missy Martinez, who's done the podcast, who yeah. you've listened to by now, and if you haven't, go back and listen to the episode. She's so fucking funny. Dude, she's, she's the, best. the best. She's the best Twitter account on the planet. She's, she makes me laugh harder than anybody else on Twitter. Yeah, she's, she's great. so And you funny. met her, did you meet her before porn? You met her through? We met at the AVN Awards. Oh, nice. And just instantly became the most obnoxious Mm-hmm inseparable stupid dumb bitches yeah yeah yeah, yeah i just yeah. i love her so much she's yeah. the best and then okay so then you get you do you're done with the porn then you're like i want to get into autopsies and corn like how did this is this is like I, such a big uh, jump like like and i want to get into this as fast as possible because you you brought props and, I, and we've never had props yeah so is, if you're at home listening you're gonna have to fucking youtube this whole episode because <laughs> there's a lot of props coming out here so you what schooling do you have to take for this like how do you get into this you not you're never scared of like dead bodies like none of this freaks you out like when you dissected a, a frog in school you're like Ugh. like i don't get like how no you're okay I, with i this. actually never did the dissections in school like oh, the sorry. animals no that's how i know i'm not a psychopath because I can't cut up animals, okay. right? But, but human flesh, you're like... No, fine. that's fine. But like small animals, <laughs> small animals is the beginning of yeah, a yeah, serial yeah. killer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, so the abridged version is um, after like the, who am I? What's my identity? I had like a wicked bad mental breakdown. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got out of the hospital, I was like, if I don't leave America, I'm going to literally just and myself yeah. um so i just packed a couple bags and i backpacked around the world for like a year and a half by myself alone yeah where'd you go 43 countries all by yourself same yeah. hostels yeah yeah did you fuck a lot of hot european people? yeah yeah <laughs> didn't get any stds no condoms yeah fuck yeah no <laughs> oh my you know what now i gotta go to australia now because i <laughs> that's what you're saying did they're clean over there no this is okay this is crazy yeah so then after the year and a half um just fucking around seeing the world i was in dubai and it was like the day before it was december 30th and i had met this guy in australia and i was in dubai and i was like man i really like this guy i'm gonna just moved to Australia because I had nowhere else left to go yeah. but home. So I called uh, Missy and I was like, you got to pack up the rest of my stuff and put it in storage. I'm not coming back. So I moved to Australia. I stayed there for five, almost six years. Oh, wow. And Where in Australia was this? I lived in Gold Coast, Queensland okay. for a couple years and then down to Sydney. Okay. And you loved it? Loved it. Okay. But um, so while I was there, I was able to just completely turn my entire life around. I worked really, really hard. Um, and I had always wanted to work in autopsy. And so a job came available. I was already working in a pathology lab and a job came available. And in Australia, those government jobs are few far in between. Mm -hmm. um, people stay in them and don't leave. And there's like nine of those people. Yeah, and you're so, like, I'm getting in. Yeah, so I went to the library and I rented a book called The Postmortem Technique. And I studied it. And I researched a morgue in L.A. that went out of business in the same year that I left America. Uh -huh. So I did my interview on a panel of six doctors. Here are my tour dates. Please come see me. If you like my comedy, follow me, subscribe to my YouTube, and keep following along the Seven Faction. Follow Seven Faction Podcast. Anyways, here are my tour dates. Grand Rapids, Michigan at Dr. Grins, February 15th to 17th. That I'm doing, uh, I, I don't think it's announced yet, but if you're listening to my podcast... 
Jan- uh, February 21st, I will be in Vancouver doing my new show, Filth, at the Vancouver Just for Laughs Comedy Festival. Then I'll be right in Rochester after that, the 22nd, 24th. Then I'll be in New Brunswick, New Jersey for my birthday, March 7th to 9th. Come to that. My boyfriend's also doing a set. LOL, better be funny. And then I'll be in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Please come see me in Canada, March 14th to 16th. Uh, That's it for now. Follow my Instagram. Bye. And I fucking killed it. I told them I had all this fucking experience and they couldn't check because the hospital is closed down oh and it's in America. Oh my God. I'm sorry, Rob. But Oh my God. So I crushed it. I was like cracking jokes, making them laugh. Da, 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 da. Oh, and this was in Sydney. I had flown down that morning and told them that I lived in Sydney already, mm-hmm. but I was still on Gold Coast. Anyways, I felt really good about it. Um, they called me a couple days later. I didn't get the job. I was crushed. Uh So over the next year, I kept in contact with the manager and I was like, hey, I will come in and mop the floors for free just to get my foot in the door and just like kept talking to him, talking to him. And then finally he was like, hey, Raven, um, we've got a position opening. I think you should apply for it. Went back to the library, rented my Uh fucking book (laughs) and went and did the job interview and I killed it and I got the job. But. They thought I had all this experience and he had been hyping me up to the team. Like we got this new girl starting. She's got a lot of experience. She's going to hit the ground running. She's going to fucking crush it. She doesn't need any training. And then you come in and you're like, hello. The (laughs) book (laughs) says I do what? It's so much (laughs) different. So I hadn't ever really seen like a dead, dead body like that. Other than like, you know, the old people that I was caring for in nursing. Totally different. And my first day, they do this thing called the morning parade where they bring in all the cases that came in over the night. They call it morning parade. Yeah. There's balloons. There's a whole, there's people fucking confetti everywhere. Hey, bring them out. Yeah. Bring them out. Bring them out. Yeah. Fucking clowns walking through. What the hell? (laughs) Yeah. Well, so we triage them. We go over like uh, the circumstances of the case and we decide on what type of exam the body's going to get. Okay. First body bag opens and it's a mummy. And I'm like, like 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 mummified? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why why is it a mummy? Well, wait. well, the way the decomposition happens is just all subjective to the ambient conditions of the room. So say you died in this room where you've got it's it's there's cool air, there's no insect activity, you have no sunlight, you would probably decompose much slower and then you'd probably actually mummify because like yeah, it's just not oh. hot. Like when so things not are wrapped. I mean, I'm picturing a wrapped up mummy. It was. Oh no, no. That's no. what I'm picturing. I'm like, what year? Like is Indiana it? Jones. Yes. Shit? No. I was like, what do you mean oh. mummify? This is fucking crazy. <laughs> no, like the crypt keeper guy. Okay, okay, okay. That's what. <laughs> okay, that's what mummified is. Okay, okay. So you're opening up mummified. So, <laughs> it was like, did it fuck, smell? Dude, it was fucked up. I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. Did you puke? And I was in there crying. I was like, I can't do this. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm a fucking psychopath. I've been lying about cutting up dead people so that I could get here. And now I gotta cut up a dead person. Like, I'm fucking oh crazy. God. What's wrong with me? Like, why did I do this? And I was thinking like, that is pretty fucking nuts. Yes. Like, I've lied about having all this experience. Yes. <laughs> this is crazy. Yes. Fake it till you make it. See, I mean, this is proof right here. It works. So I go to get a library card and then uh, get good at acting, I guess. I don't want to tell you. Yeah. Well, funny enough, I'm actually publishing my own book on postmortem techniques now because I'm so well versed in the field. Okay. So now you're okay. So let's, okay. Let's get, yeah. You see the mummified comes in. I freak out, go to the bathroom. I like come back. I wasn't crying. Yeah. I'm being all casual. And they're like, you were crying. Yeah. So autopsy time comes up and my boss, stand, he's like, all right, there you go. And it was like, um, sorry, it was the end of autopsy and the body was hollow. And he's like, all right, stuff the neck. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? He's like, stuff the neck. Because in Australia, we do all the reconstruction as well after the autopsy, not the morgue. We're in America. The morgue does it. Oh, okay. So we would stuff it with like wool to like make it look back to life like because we would also do viewings for the families there yeah it's a lot of responsibility and i was like build a bear it is (laughs) so i'm like build a human back to life i'm like okay like you know when you pull this shit out of a turkey Mm -hmm. i was like i can't do that and he was like just get over in there so how far in you going to the head or just the neck yeah so when we remove the tongue it's you cut you uh sorry 
when you remove the tongue you you do a circumferential you circumnavigate are, the, are the tongues aren't in the bodies everyone's no. tongue is gone yeah everything you gotta look at everything why is the tongue gone i'm getting cremated that this is it why is the tongue gone so say you we suspect maybe you choked on something right and uh-huh. i want to examine what you choked on so to get your airway i want everything to come out in what's called a block uh, all in one, right? So I will pull out the tongue, which is then attached to your esophagus. And it actually is connected by a connective tissue, not by any vessels, but to your descending aorta. So I can actually take your tongue and completely hollow out your body in like one. Why do I do this podcast? I literally, I, I act like I can, I could faint right now. I, I actually, could I actually right brought now. my manual if you want to see how it's done. But the, no, I can't be like the photos. Yeah. No, I got a vivid memory. We we can picture the okay. uh, the whole tongue ripping out of the body pretty well right now. Um, okay. But yeah, so I had to get inside of this body, okay. and um, a couple months okay. goes by. There was one day where he's like, "Take the bowel out," which is all real complicated, honestly. It's long, right? It's it's yeah. He's like, "Okay, now just like tie it off at the duodenum." I'm like, "Where the fuck is this?" Like, so do they still think that you know what you're fucking doing? I put my hands inside the body and literally just cradled the bowel. And I was just, and my boss was like, okay, I'll be right back. And I was like, oh, don't leave me. 20 minutes, just like this. Holding the insides of a body. I'm in it. It's all still attached. And I was like, oh. And you're not, there's no gagging. You're not sick over this. And so at this point, you're like into it now. No, I'm in my head thinking like, you fucking psychopath. What are you doing? You're a fucking dumbass. Everybody knows you're such a fucking fraud. Did anyone know? Everybody knew. Okay. So finally, <laughs> three months later, my boss comes up to me and he's like, Raven, you didn't have the same experience you said you did, did you? And I was like, no, but I'm past my probationary period and you can't fire me. Oh, really? So I kept the okay. job, eventually became one of the best eviscerators. So they taught you everything, and then you were, I, I assume that you're like, you're wanting to learn. Oh, yeah. You're not, I, you're not gonna hold someone's organs for 20 minutes if you don't wanna be there. Yeah, I, I loved it, and I honestly became like very quickly, really highly regarded. Not okay. to sound arrogant, but um, since then, I have now worked at several different offices. Um, Do across you know how the many country, bodies you've ripped out tongues out of roughly. <laughs> I'm not gonna sleep tonight. There's no fucking way. <laughs> um, I've done roughly a little bit over eight thousand cases. Eight thousand bodies. How's that for a body count? That's that's the biggest body count I've ever heard in my life. I thought I fucked a lot of guys. Now this is really making me feel like I got up my game. Eight thousand bodies. Okay. Mom, okay, okay. Let's. I don't even. Body, know where yaddy, to yaddy, yaddy. I don't, I don't. I don't even know where to get back to right now because I've never felt more faint in my life. Okay. What's okay? What's the craziest thing? Do, do you ever see when someone comes that's really hot and you're like, oh, that, that was a hot guy? Yes. Hot? Have you yes. heard? Have you, have you ever been around? Have you never seen necrophilia? Have you never? No. Okay. Like you never walked in accidentally at work and you're like, oh, oh, oh sorry, George, didn't know you were still in here. No, because we okay. all know like how gross. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. But no, I actually um I see a lot of hot dudes in the morgue and I'm just like, man, what if he was the one? Oh no. And this is fucked That's too. Depressing. Me and my ex husband got this uh matching tattoo. Uh-huh. And I found it on Pinterest. It's weird that I keep seeing it on other people. Yeah. <laughs> but I got this guy once and he was super attractive and he had the matching king, which a lot of people have. But I was just like, oh. wait, you held his hand. What was that? Are you matched it back and forth? Are you held this man's you held this man's dead hand? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah, what's wrong you with do that? that? You shake their hands. I'm about to I'm about to hollow you out and you just shake it's their like, hands. Okay, so, okay. I don't, there's so many questions I have right now. So when people are coming in, how fresh are they? Are they coming right from the hospital dead? Or like, how dead are these people? Because I heard sometimes oh, they make yeah. sounds, air comes out, some, they sit up sometimes. Is that any of that happened? Or they, they're dead dead when they come in? Definitely no one sits up. I don't know where I heard that. Maybe, maybe I made that up. Maybe I made that up. Tales <laughs> yeah. from the crypt. I think I'm watching too much fuck. I'm watching too many cartoons. I, I fucked up. Um, so... Unfortunately, most of them that come in are not fresh because... Um, Unfortunately? Oh, you're real bummed out about this. It yeah. sucks. They're coming in past the expiry date here. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, so say, so hospitals do a limited amount of autopsies, right? And they perform mostly um, limited autopsies where they just want to take something and biopsy it so that they can look at it microscopically for cancer or whatever. Um, And that's also for people that have death certificates. So when bodies fall into a medical examiner jurisdiction or coronial jurisdiction, it's because they fall within certain parameters, meaning it's a sudden and unexpected death, Mm -hmm. suicide, um, homicide, and we have natural causes, which also falls under sudden and unexpected like overdoses. Okay. A lot of those times, um, there if somebody died in a hospital suspected of overdose, there's going to be a little bit of a lull between the time that they die and come to us. Also, people die at home all the time. Yeah. And, it, you know, you have to wait for someone to find them. Or, like, a body gets buried or a body gets stuffed in a bag or something. And th- very r- seldom are they fresh. Okay. And in good condition. Because most of those bodies go straight to a funeral home. And okay. they don't require our... Okay. Examination. So, so, okay. So you you don't get you get bodies usually after the funeral home? No, before. before? Okay, Especially before, okay, okay. um so when they're in medical examiner jurisdiction because we are a, essentially a law enforcement agency, we take priority over that body. So say at the scene okay. you could say the investigator will go, "Oh, this looks like a suicide." That's not necessarily true. It's not in their place to call that. So we take jurisdiction and we conduct our own exam where okay. we look for evidence. We measure, say, ligature marks or whatever you have to do. Yeah. Um, so we can't actually give that to anybody else. Otherwise, there's no continuity of evidence. Mm-hmm. The um, chain of command, chain of evidence is broken. So Okay. Uh, so you get them in, hollow them out. Not all of okay. them, but yeah. Okay. Most so of them. Most of you hollow out. What 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 stays in there? What are we keeping in? Uh, I mean, it depends. Like sometimes nothing. Like I mean, we reconstitute, repatriate all the organs back to the body okay. after the examination. Okay. There's a, a tissue retention law where we can only take certain uh, a certain amount at a certain size that we can keep later so we can cut that into slides. Everything else goes back to the body. But say like you're suspected of spinal meningitis, you will be fully eviscerated and all of your organs will be looked at individually, but we will also take your spinal cord and your brain. Um, Oh my God. But the spinal cord's not necessary on all cases. But a typical autopsy is all, all of your cavities, including your brain. Okay. But if it's a very evidently clear, say, hanging, Mm-hmm. And we're confident that the person did that to themselves and there was there's no suspicious circumstances. We can just take specimens for toxicology testing and okay. send them on their way. So you take the organs out, examine them, put them back in. Yeah. Take the brain out. How do you get the brain out? I'm going to uh, ask this. I'm going to regret it. But how do you get the brain out? So have you ever had your arm in a cast or anything in a cast? No. Have you ever seen anybody get a cast taken off? It's yes. like an oscillating saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the same saw we use. <laughs> So ask this. you saw the head. Okay. Where do we, where we saw in the head? What part of the head? So, on? so you cut right, not the skin. We, we want to maintain the integrity of the face so that the decedent can still have a proper viewing um, okay. from the family. We try to take as much care as we can with like the yeah, superficial not, aspects okay. or not just butchering people. But um, the eyes staying in there or the eyes? It depends if it's. <laughs> I always ask about the eyes. I I'm like where the fuck are the eyes? Typically, we do leave the eyes in, okay. but especially on like say pediatric cases with like shaken baby or like abused children, and we want to see if there's hemorrhaging on the retinas, then we do recover those so you do babies too. Yes. Are those fu- that must be fucked up? Those yeah. Just, I mean, is it more is it, or is it all the same thing? They're all coming in. It's like kind of numb now to it. Yeah. I'm just t- totally desensitized to it. And mm. I feel like if I were to get emotionally attached to every case, then it definitely wouldn't be a job that no, I could no, no. do. No, 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 no. Not saying that some cases don't resonate and some mm. aren't sadder than others. But when I'm there, I have an objective and something that I'm there to do. And it's not like I'm looking at something like a lifeless specimen. I understand you know the magnitude of what i'm doing yeah. but i'm not like oh, okay. you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah so when we're taking the brain out you know you you reflect the skin uh pull it down like just above the orbital bones and i'll like, take an oscillating peel it down the like face roll it down the face rolls off this this easily <laughs> it is not easy it's a fight it's a depending on the age it's a fight can I sign something right now? Say I'm getting cremated the second I die. 
Like the moment I die, I'm going to flames. I'm, I, might, I might actually walk into flames. I mean, you, I you actually don't, might walk into flames. That's how I'm going to go. It's I, not I, necessarily your choice. Healing a face. <laughs> yeah. pe- like, I just picture you, like, I picture you having like a leg up, being like, like feeling. Is it that so, hard? Sometimes, feel? sometimes, yeah. And we do full face reflections if there's, you know, if I think that there's like a fracture in somebody's zygoma, which is your uh, cheekbone, mm-hmm. I've got to reflect the whole face so I can see that. You know, and image it. Um, or if there's a projectile, there's a projectile lodge and I need to retrieve it. Um, but yeah, we I I'll saw right above the orbital bones mm-hmm. and I'll circumferentially navigate around and the saw oscillates, right? So it cuts but, um, with friction. Okay. So it doesn't cut tissue. So I am not going to get hurt by this saw. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it is hard. And it's like, like you're hearing zzz, and you, Oh, it's, it's like bone. Fr- are you to wear like goggles? Yeah. We're usually wearing a full, like, you're wearing so much shit. So okay. much PPE, sweating. It's a really physical job. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll take my cut down right, uh, usually just right at the occipital protuberance, which is like this little okay, the, bony part okay, on your yeah, bum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> On them, uh-huh. I'll use what's called a skull key. It's oh, the classic skull key. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you have those lying around. At Stick home. it in, and you just the old skull key in the head. <laughs> the old, there it is. Yeah, key then fits. You um. can pop the calvarium off, and then you just peel it off, and there's a lot your of peeling. Brain. There's a lot, a lot of peeling. peeling. So the brain, does it like, is it like it comes out as a whole thing or is it like attached to other things? So you kind of just like plop it out. Yeah. Some, so the brain's actually super, super soft. It's like. I'm actually going to throw up. <laughs> I think I might actually throw up. Okay, like, you know, when you're eating <sighs> jello, but it still mm-hmm. kind of can maintain its shape. I'm never eating jello again. It's a little bit yeah, softer I've, I've than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you take it out, plop it. And it, it okay. You want to see? What? No, no, okay. no, 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 I can't. Oh, it's I can't okay. See. I was, I was even going to show no, you. No, 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 no. I, I can't see. I, I can't. The, the hearing, the, the, I should have, we're putting a definite warning on this episode. <laughs> My God. Okay. So there's nothing that's ever come in. What's something that's come in? You've never seen something like the crazy thing that's come in. Like you've never seen something come in. You're like, wow, that's different than most bodies. Like something that stood out that was like something in, in the body you found or something like. I can tell you things that I still get excited over, yes, but okay, okay. I've seen everything, so, but um, decapitations are like, they're not super common. So when you see one, you're like, whoa, a little diamond in the rough. Are they know? in like two separate bags or are they put them in the same bag? Tip, I mean, most of the time they will put as many of the organs as they can or like body parts in the like same bag? all with the body okay yeah because it's tagged right it's all under one case number yeah, yeah yeah so like i mean there are times if a body's like completely exploded or something like they bring those in if it's like a really big mass casualty you could have like arm here arm here like we need to know where this arm goes to so and do you put it you do you put it back together you put the body back together so thankfully in America, the um, mortuary does that or whatever funeral home, they do that they stuff. Do that. Oh. But sometimes we just have to do like an inventory. Something is just so uh, traumatic that you just really like, I think that's a spleen. I think that, oh you know. Oh my God. Um, my God. Okay. <laughs> I love how you're just talking about this so casually. Are you okay with this? Are you, everyone's fine with this. Okay. Aaron? <laughs> Susan? welfare check Susan? okay 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 i'm trying to think of what, what even to ask that's uh, okay body's hollowed out How, then you, you close the body up is the whole body stuff with wool or just the neck where, where, where's, where's this wool coming from so in america we don't do the wool okay we just put the bag in there and just do bag the bag of organs you just so this is like in. literally like a turkey you're yeah, putting the bag of pretty back much. In there. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm um, actually a vegetarian now. You suture put the bag of organs, like the back or the front. The the front. Okay. Unless I did a back flay or I flayed off the skin, then I'll suture that. Yeah, I'm done eating chicken. You're putting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I'm not joking. I'm eating tofu for the rest of my life. Okay, so you're sti- so you're stitching. You're doing the whole thing. So you you learn everything. You're learning embalming. Yeah. You're learning stitching. You're learning every, every single organ. So you know every single body part. Just to see at this point now. Yeah. If it's so like a healthy body part, you know what exactly what it is. Even if it's, I, I'm trained to be able to identify impaired tissues as well. So okay. even if they're in a heavy state of decomposition, they've autolyzed, or even if it's just like a little piece on the freeway, I can 
typically oh, tell you what it is without okay. having to look under a microscope. Okay. And now I can also, it's not my place to be able to diagnose, but I can find cause of death and like assist with, hey, you need to look at this. Yes. Like yeah, yeah, this yeah. looks like a myocardial infarction or. So what's um, the crazy thing you found in somebody? There's something you get excited about then. Like what, what, what's something that's in there? Like, do you find what do you, what, yeah, what? Yeah. You got so excited over this. I'm so scared. What? <laughs> what? So other than gallstones. Which you liked apparently like, I don't even know what gallstone is. What is like, I don't, Cholelithiasis is <laughs> the, the proper name. Okay. But it's essentially just a bile and cholesterol. And blob. It, a hardened blob. Yeah, yeah. And it's super painful. People can get their gallbladder removed to avoid okay. this. But okay. or the, not. it's not like an elective. Like, I want to get it removed. But they can't have it removed. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're super cool. So and <sighs> that's your... <laughs> You're getting Sorry. like hot off this. Okay, okay. Oh my God. But the other cool yeah, thing. Yes. I've only seen a few of these. Oh Have you ever heard of a teratoma? No. Oh shit, hell yeah. What's, what is this? What is this? Okay. So, <laughs> so when you are developing, there's a. a As a baby. Like in, yeah, in yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a, so you have germ cells, right? And those germ cells, that they're stem cells, germ cells that can differentiate into a multitude of different cells, right? Mm -hmm. And those cells go like, teeth go here, hair goes here, lungs go here. But if that process is disrupted, those germ cells can end up in a different part of the body and then differentiate. So sometimes we get these things called teratomas, which are benign, meaning you won't die from them. And in women, they're mostly found in the uterus. And they contain teeth and hair. They can have bits of lung or brain. Okay. They're so fucking so cool. So you're telling me right now, in my uterus, I can have like a little hairy teeth ball. I'm going to die. If, if you do and you get it removed, please give it to me. So what I, okay, so people mostly get, do, do they know they have it? Well, I know I have this. No, I don't know I have this. <laughs> I'm the doctor. I don't want that in me. Is there follow? Is it like there's like roots on the hair? Well, how much hair are we talking? There's roots in the hair. Is it attached or is it like a hair ball? I don't know why the hair is the one that's grossed me out the most. This is so bizarre. Dude, it's fucked. Yeah. So, so you open somebody up and you find, you just see this. Uh, what does it look like it in? Like a skin sack? Like what is it? How do you tell? Yeah. Well, I mean, so it's so, just so like, like a, loose teeth floating around my. Uh, no, no. It's a right ball. Now. It's like okay, roughly the okay. texture of like a baked potato. <laughs> I, I'm actually going to lose weight after this podcast because I'm never eating again. This is fucking crazy. A big, how big of a big potato? It depends. Some of them like, are not like a breakfast, bitty, but... like little ones you get at Trader Joe's, like a big, big potato. No, not like a little, like, like, a, like a fist. Some of them are like russets. Russet? Okay, so you're 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 finding a fucking big potato skin sack. And you, you're like, oh, what's this? Let's open it up. That's your first reaction? Uh, okay, so in pathology, the first reaction of everyone is, oh, let's cut into it. Uh -huh. You know, I get, I'm like, I, I freaking love them. They're so I, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Still keep growing. So, so my whole life, it'll keep growing inside me. It can or it can't. It depends. It just, it, it's. And you can't, so when you go check, if I get an MRI right now, they wouldn't be able to see it. So you could, it could be detected if you had like, say, um, a pelvic ultrasound. Okay. They'd see it. Okay. Right? If you had imaging done on that area, um, would somebody would see it. it. And typically, you'd probably be experiencing cramping. Okay. and Like, you'd, you'd be like, something's not right here. But The amount of listeners who are freaking the fuck out right now being like, I have a little teeth sack inside me. So you, you find a little teeth hair sack, you open it up, and you're, you're, you seem quite jizzed up over it. You seem quite excited about Fucking this. Fucking juiced up. And so, uh, like, are, we, are they baby teeth or are they, like, adult teeth? No, they'll be, like, full molars. like Full molars. Not attached. Just loose in the balls. So you open the potato up. This is what I don't get. Are they attached to the side? It's just, or is it like you're holding a fucking little shaker of fucking teeth in here? Like, that's what I don't understand. <laughs> okay, so, um, so when you, when I open the cavity, if I, I'll look down. So I always take inventory of the ovaries. We want to see if the ovaries that are there, fallopian tubes, mm -hmm. uterus. We call them UFOs. UFOs present. UFOs not okay. present. Okay. And I can tell, like, wow, that's a really big ovary because ovaries are like that, right? Okay. Sometimes we see things and we'll see like fibroids, which is really common. Mm -hmm. 
And sometimes we see teratomas, which will look a bit like a fibroid. It just looks like an extra mass. And if you're trained, you know that shouldn't be there. Yeah. What is that? Um, and you don't really know if it's a teratoma until you cut into it because it has the same feeling of a fibroid, which is like a thick kind of bouncy ball. Okay. So it's this sack that's basically packed really tight um, with tissue remnants and a lot mostly hair usually mostly hair so you can mash it up or like i mean we section it but if you were to like feel it it would be like mashed potatoes okay. packed really firmly together more like tater tot i don't know so do some people don't i've seen things where some people have these on the outside like they think it's like a little twin thing and they pull it out and they have this but it's like a, like a hanging outside the body the oh outside no the body. no no yeah. so this is mostly an inside thing it's internal only okay yeah okay. yeah and how many of these have you seen i've literally seen three wow out they're 8, not thousand bodies okay they're so not is that common. the least common thing you see then like what else is something like super uncommon that you've been like what the hell is going on here i've been waiting to find a bezoar. Well, obviously, what is that? Yeah, like, 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 <laughs> all of a sudden I go, oh, bezoar. Yeah, now I'm like, no, I don't know what the fuck a bezoar is. It's just a wad of hair. Just, just regular hair. Yeah, people. You know how some people have the issue they, where they eat. It's a psychological problem where oh, people eat, eat their own hair. hair. Oh, keratin actually doesn't digest. So, so there's just it stays in there. If you ingest enough hair, it will just sit there. And it can create a blockage of your bowel. Like, you can ultimately die from it. Unlike cats. They don't have that then because they're fucking coughing no. it all up. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you've never seen that? No, have you I've found, never like, seen Have you ever found objects? Oh, hell yeah. Okay. What, Lots. What, what are we finding? What's what's a common object in there? Um. Well, dildos are pretty obvious. You find yeah. a lot of those. I found a hollow. In the butt? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was like, well. What or sometimes they migrate all the way up. Whoa. The, it's... So when, when a body comes in, we'll do an x-ray or a CT, right? Oh, before and, you go in. Yeah, typically, and, and we'll see it there. Sometimes a body doesn't get imaging done okay. in advance, and then and it's like a, a little real, surprise. That's a big surprise, having a dildo in the, in the fucking lungs. That's how... No, how, not in the lungs. Yeah, how far it, up is this going? Just sigmoid colon, which is like this, like... Um, is that how they die? That's how they would have died. No, no. They would have died of something else in the, the... They've just had that dildo in them for how long? I don't know. You gotta ask them. Oh, I can't ask them. Depends I, on I how literally... detailed the report is. How, so how good are these dildos? And if they're staying, are they staying intact in there? Yeah. Well, we gotta give a shout out to the dildo company for keeping the... <laughs> Keeping that, keeping that. This could be your sponsor. This, this should be my next uh, yeah. sponsor. Fucking dildos that fucking don't decompose in a fucking body, and you live your whole fucking life with a dildo inside your fucking. Yeah, body. I mean, usually what happens what is it's somebody fuck? that dies. What I've realized is whatever weird thing you do that you don't want people to know you do, you will die doing that, and then everyone will know. And that's usually when we find the dildos. No, I'm dying in flames. I'm walking. But this, one I'm time, walking, I'm walking to fucking see you have a shark eat me. This is fucked up. I found a jalapeno in someone's butt. Like a whole one? Yeah, like a big one. A big one? Yeah. And red most, or green? It was green. Oh, shit. In a little... Oh, for the red. I mean, it's... A little, little brown. Well, yeah, a little caca on it. <laughs> so that was the... Okay, but no like other like 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 coins or like buttons? <laughs> um, <laughs> was the the people are like, I found a, uh, a, a fish tank filter once. A fish tank filter? Where was that in the body? It was inside the person's stomach. Oh. My God. I had to look up the model number. Did that's you? I, yeah, that's how I found out what it was. And did you contact the store? You're like, hey, I, if you, <laughs> I got a return. You should put a warning uh, on this. I can't find the receipt, but uh, I have, it's still intact. <laughs> and it stays, in, it stays like intact in the body. So the body, we can just keep stuff in there for later. Yeah, I mean, some things are just not meant to break down. Um, wow. Basically anything that's not that you wouldn't throw in your yard as compost will also not break down in your body still those that's what it's yeah 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 okay let's get this box out you brought a box i don't know how i'm going to handle this box right now but we got a box of stuff so what is what is in this box is the question here not a jalapeno <laughs> if you're not fucking watching my youtube you're stupid because this is fucking this is this is crazy okay let's get the box so what w there's no organs in here 
No, 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 no. I gotta ask this because I'm fucking terrified. I love the way you make the box look fun. There is bananas on it. There is, is that fucking Richard, who is that, Nicolas Cage? <laughs> yeah, and they got like a nice family over here riding. A lot of uh, bananas. Banana. Okay. Yeah, so this is my old autopsy kit that I would take with me when I would do like homicide investigations and I would keep all of my tools in here and everything that I would need to do a homicide investigation okay, okay and i covered it in bananas because because yeah, it's you know it's fun that way it's our only way of adding our own little piece of personality mm -hmm, that and the socks mm -hmm. you wear so you show up and a bunch of police are dead serious and you have this whole banana box You're like ready to figure out the crime scene okay, okay, okay. yeah 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 okay okay <laughs> um <sighs> i'm so scared right now what's gonna happen here oh my god i took all the really the bad bananas things. in there yeah so there's still bananas in here there's still yeah so if you open up you just prank me excuse me just bananas what's going on here so okay, another this, banana. Okay, okay. We got bananas. This is comical. You got to keep it fun. <laughs> Carrot Top would love this. Um, Kara... <sighs> this okay, is a banana well, pen. Okay. This. Let's get to the stuff. This is so okay. Many stuff. Okay. So these are some L-shaped rulers Better. that we would use for like, you know, if there's any any type of injury or trauma. You're measuring. Them. I can measure okay. it. Okay. Like, okay. And then we have this different type of L-shaped ruler as well. And this is just kind of like a color scale that helps with when you're photo photographing it. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. Simple, simple, simple. We got some, some snippies. What are this? Yeah, so these are just snippies that are pretty versatile. Um, they can easily be used. I, I like to use these for cutting baby ribs. <laughs> it's the casualty of which you're saying these things. Baby ribs. Yeah. I've never, do you eat meat? Yeah. You, <laughs> I'm never going to barbecue with Work you. Work up I an appetite when okay. you. <laughs> okay, okay. So these are for baby ribs. So they're just tiny little snippers. That's Aww. that's most commonly used for that. Yeah. When you go to it, where do you buy this from? Does it say baby ribs underneath? What? Like, where do you, I don't understand this. No, so a lot of our tools are provided by a surgical company. Like the okay. same stuff that you would use in an operating room, okay. we would use. Yes. Um, but for the other things that we need, like for adult ribs, you can get that stuff at any Home Depot. Really? Yeah, like the they're big hedge cutters, and we use those on adult ribs because, yeah. Shout out to Home Depot uh, for, <laughs> for, for what is that? What is this bag? I keep looking at what is what is in this fucking bag? Oh, what these is are this? just seashells. Oh fuck! Well, what the. <laughs> Oh, just seashells. Okay, I was like, those are baby's eyes. I don't know what I'm looking at right now. No, they're just seashells. Classic bit to have in there. Yeah, you got to keep. Okay, what do we? Oh, this is just uh, for like a dental exam. We okay. also do dental identifications. Okay, okay. Some um, big tweezers, some big Q-tips, long Q-tips. If you got to do your eyeshadow really far away from the mirror. They're actually knitting needles, but I'll use these to determine the trajectory of uh, a, of a bullet of like a pathway oh yeah. okay so. so you can see how far it goes in okay yeah. okay yeah also sometimes with multiple gsw's like um sometimes What's it GSW? just gunshot wounds okay. it will look like there are everything like you can't tell what goes to what just by looking at it and you need to kind of use oh, something like what. this okay so you can document it properly yeah 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 do you um, see a lot of gunshot wounds Oh, yeah. Is it the most common? Yeah. That and fentanyl overdoses. Jesus. Listen up, fucking America. Stop. Stop yeah. doing cocaine and stop fucking buying guns. God damn it. Be nicer Psychotic. to each other. What the hell? Yeah. Do you, want, do you want this? Do you want fucking knitting needles in you? Do you want a banana? <laughs> you want this? You want this guy? This gal? This Yeah, you want to die and then have this woman shaking a weird banana? This is serious. <laughs> and then I'll fill out my report with my yeah. banana. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally uh, this is this is props okay this is what this looks interesting this little. is a cute little cat paw um not a lot of people use this i do um i recently had neurosurgery and uh a surgery on my wrist so did you ask to stay open and watch the whole thing and stay awake we were like i'd like to see how this is done while i'm alive i actually asked my surgeon to take photos during mm -hmm. surgery of mm -hmm. and he did for me yes of course he did yeah yeah that's probably on the background <laughs> of your fucking phone but since I, I, I have trouble using my extensor tendon, which is my thumb, I uh, use this to hold tissue. Okay. So it's like Good. a little... Yeah, it's a little fork. It's a little for, back yeah, scratcher. I don't need that on me. It's a little back <laughs> scratcher that pulls back skin. Perfect. Great. We love that. Um, we love the old skin peeler. I have different... 
different Little types of skin scratcher scalpels. Okay. Um, they look so, so they don't look sharp. They, they don't have a blade on them. The oh, okay. Blades okay, are okay. disposable. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes so, sense. So. I use this long one on if somebody is bariatric, meaning extremely obese, mm -hmm. because there's usually so much skin to cut through subcutaneous fat. Like there's so oh. deep that like this isn't it's too difficult okay, okay. or when I'm removing the prostate because the prostate is down so low behind the pubis symphysis that it's a blind cut. Like I can't just open the cavity okay, and yeah, visualize yeah, yeah. that. You have to go way so in there. I'll hold it like this and then. And then you'll scrapey, scrapey, yeah, 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 yeah. Never I sleeping actually, or eating again. This is great. <laughs> this is great. I actually tried to get this tattooed on me, and it is that what it, that is? Yeah, because um, after the tattoo started, I don't know why I didn't notice before, but the guy only had one hand, and he wasn't very good at tattooing. Yeah, that's what you look for. Two hands usually in a tattoo artist. I feel like so. You <laughs> is that you're not getting it fully done then? That's okay. There you go. Yeah. There it is. Okay, let's get let's okay. Let's get it. Let's get to the. Second oh, layer. here you go. Oh, this oh, is a is. this is a saw blade. Oh, good. Let's cut my skull open and have some fun. There it is. This is a fan blade, though. Um, I would use this for a spinal cord removal. Okay. Uh, like posteriorly, mm -hmm. would use that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I've just got some other little probes here. Probes. Okay. Yeah, like these. So. See how the end is pretty blunt and rounded? Yeah. So say I wanted to investigate a much smaller hole um, and find the trajectory but not add any other trauma to it. And I wanted to maintain the continuity of whatever Are I'm Are the bullets at. still in there when you go in there? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. I mean, we got to look for them. We, we'll image it and you'll, you can see on CT or x-ray where the bullet is, uh -huh. but they are squirrely. Do they break open when they go in there, or do they usually? Go? It depends on the. Okay. It depends like on thing? the projectile. Okay. Yeah, you have rip rounds, which are really annoying. They break off into these different Frame. pieces. Okay. Maybe yeah. Find them all out. Okay. And then you've got like shotgun pellets, like bird shot, snake shot, and they're different size pellets that just disperse like this. You have 20 millimeters, which are like small, and then you got nine millimeters, which is your most common. Oh fuck. Okay. But this, I can use this to also trace vessels. As okay. well, yeah, we always trace those vessels. Like Tracing I can those vessels. Let's get to the bottom layer. I'm very excited for this. What's going on in here? Oh, is there? I thought there's bigger things in there. I took I I took all the sharps out. So okay, those okay, are usually okay, the okay, bigger okay. things. I was like waiting for like a big. This is more my, bananas. You're not gonna believe this. This is my autopsy manual that you don't want to see. I absolutely don't want to see that. Your what is there like pictures? Um, yeah, but you can avoid pictures. It's meant to be an educational resource for people. Like I did a whole medical okay, terminology okay, section. Okay. And um, yeah, I could, there that, are. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. I saw a bit of a skin thing. Look like a big liver spot. Don't need to see that. Also, I just have to say, I got a clearance for the photos, and there's no like identifying thing. No, there was no, them. there's yeah, no face yeah. on that or head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is. This was a book that I was keeping for a while of all the case to keep track oh, of the cases. Oh, fun little diary. Dear diary, today uh, <laughs> today yeah. I, I removed a man's skull and put it back together bit by bit. Well, Good night. <laughs> Love you. Raven. <laughs> I would keep, I would, you know, keep track just so if I go to court on a case a year later, I can remember like if something interesting. Okay. Do you guys go to court a lot? Yeah. Oh, really? Not a lot, but we do. We oh, do. Okay, okay. Classic bananas. Again, if you're not watching this episode on YouTube, you're fucking stupid. Feel that one. He's cool. So that feels like a teratoma. That's that's, that's what, actually, good. I'm glad now I know what my teeth and hair and ball feel like. Um, I would. I don't know how I would have gone on if I didn't know what that felt like. Um. Yeah. So and then is, is, down here, it's just I've just got some evidence tape. Oh, class. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Evidence tape is fun. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. We'll do all the packaging of the project projectiles, evidence, anything mm -hmm. that comes with the body. Any other kind of evidence at the scene, the police usually take. Oh, okay. So you don't get the fun stuff? No, we get the extra fun stuff because that's inside the body. And there's more banana stuff. I love this banana theme. It's and really then, arrested development. Um, these are just hemostats. They're not sharp. 
Um, these are mostly surgical. We don't actually get provided these, but if a body comes in and they've had a lot of medical intervention, sometimes the paramedics will leave these and then we go ahead and keep them other than throw them away because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. super, super useful. Okay. Yeah, like when I'm removing an appendix, I can like clamp it off and... And do not. they stay intact when you're doing that or does it like go through? Like, or is like usually the, the organs stay pretty like intact? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Unless it's a severely, it's a, unless it's in an advanced state of decomposition where things just fall apart and they turn into soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they're, they're pretty intact. Yeah, but otherwise they're, they remain intact and, you know, then we can fix it uh -huh. uh, in formalin. Yeah, well, no. I have to ask my favorite question, which I don't even know how you're going to answer because I don't even think this uh, relates to you at all. Because uh, it seems as if nothing really makes you uncomfortable. Or nah. I ask, what's the worst body thing anyone's ever heard or seen? Like something that's haunted you personally. Is there anything at all <laughs> that you've like seen or like been told about that's affected you in any way? Very curious to see if you have an answer. Like in a this. sad way? No, like a way that's like like so, so gross or so like it's just bothered you in a way. You're like I don't like something that's just like haunted you that you can't get out of your head. That's just the worst thing you've ever heard. There's no medical thing that's like you're like I'm, I'm scared to... to get that or like. A... Oh, dude, I'm scared of everything. I think I'm a hypochondriac. I'm like, <laughs> you know, but um, uh, no, I mean, I I. I just see things as cool, you know, like okay. the teratoma was definitely for me uh -huh. the like, that's tight. Like, I wonder if Has I have ever been those. like any like removed penises come in like any. Do you have yeah. That? Do you have that yeah, one? it does happen. Or like if somebody's a really bad shot with a with a gun and so we see a lot of like dick injuries, dick injuries. penis injuries. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, you see a lot of big dicks come in there and you're like, God. Someone's Wish missing this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this guy's yeah. missed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we see, we see everything. Yeah, you know. Um. <laughs> yeah, you, and I now I see everything. Now I mentally have an image of things that I didn't know I needed in there, and I did not need. Yeah, I mean, we see everything, and you definitely take mental note of it. But yeah, do you ever like take something home with you? And you think about it later, you're like that really <sighs> fucked me, or like. No, I think, you know, I have a personal circumstance where my father, sister, and brother were killed by a drunk driver. And when I get drunk driving accidents, that, those yeah. are act those stick with me. I am at a point now where I don't like cry and break down about it, but it That's... will kind of trigger something in me where I'll think about it later, think yeah, about yeah, them yeah. and you know Are you uh, sober? Um, yeah, I mean, I just don't drink. I yeah, just don't yeah. like drinking. Yeah, yeah. But um, I do talk at the uh, YDD classes, which are the drunk driving classes mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. have. And I do speak. In LA? Or everywhere? Just over? in yeah. places. In places. Okay. Yeah. okay. I, was yeah. Like, I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm not saying trying to say any names here, but I was like, yeah, because that would be good for people to hear if you're listening and you're yeah. also affected by this. Yeah. And I. a situation, you know, you yeah. should, yeah. It probably helps to hear people talk about it and to like yeah. go to these like meetings and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, I like to, I, I had a DUI a really long time ago as well. So when I speak to these classes, like, I can identify with you because I've been there. Yeah. But I've also been on the other side of it, yeah. you know, and not everybody goes out to have a fun night and thinking like, oh, I'm going to obliterate a whole family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But accidents happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So uh, that's good. That you, uh, did you go to therapy and stuff for, to like get past all this and like, no, I oh yeah, it, I was like. Therapy always yeah, yeah. yeah yeah no no I'm, I'm trying to really advocate people going to therapy on this oh yeah um, it helps quite 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 well yeah i mean it's great i mean talking to friends and stuff is awesome but there's a little bit there's definitely a difference mm -hmm. when you're talking to a non-biased like impartial person mm -hmm. um and get help with like coping with grief and things like that yeah yeah so well i'll ask the final question of the podcast and i feel like you're gonna have a good answer to this what what do you think the funniest way you could die is I, I am absolutely dead set that I'm going to die doing something like crossing the street to pat a dog. Like, <laughs> something so It's going to be something yeah, yeah, yeah. so mundane. And that to me is like ridiculous. Yeah. You know, because when people die, you don't really, you think of like, oh, this person had cancer or old age or mm -hmm. suicide. 
you don't think about like oh raven was just like we saw, saw a cute dog saw a golden like, retriever susan come here <laughs> <laughs> oh my well this was a very very informative episode my god my thank you so much for coming on so last minute too this is fucking incredible yeah thanks for having me where can everybody get to follow you where can they learn more about this stuff like what you said you have a book coming out yeah well i'm in the process okay, of it okay but you can follow me on instagram at the raven fraser mm-hmm. and there i will have updates about my book and my upcoming forensics podcast oh we love this there we go yeah this is all good this is all very informative yeah and then go check out the club the yeah check out deaf noodles comedy club yeah yeah well thank you so much for coming on this has been very my god this was <laughs> oh boy this one's up there for the book staff infection listeners Please follow her on Instagram. Please keep watching the fucking YouTubes and following my goddamn ass on YouTube. Follow the Seth Mexican account, sending your stories. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you.